Okay, so first of all, um, let's remind ourselves to begin with the words of our Lord Jesus. And let's read quickly, friends, from Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24. And um, his disciples asked him a question, right? And it was this, signs of the times and the end of the age. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming? Now, many people believe, friends, that this whole narrative that our Lord Jesus spoke of has been fulfilled. But I want to bring your attention to the question that he answers. He answers the question, tell us when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Because the new next age that is to come will be the millennium, right? So they understand this and he's going to tell them what's to come. I'm going to read the whole thing. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrow. So we're going to see a lot more racial tension, you guys. A lot more nationalism increasing in the world, which I believe is different. Nationalism is different to patriotism. Patriotism is healthy. Nationalism is incredibly unhealthy and wicked. All these are the beginning of sorrows. And we can just sense it in, in our world right now, you guys. There are nations today arming themselves, right, military-wise. They're arming themselves. There's this race going on. And we've got nations today who are nuclear armed nations. So we see that from since the turn of the year, you guys, we see this intensity. There's something is different this year. It's definitely felt. A lot of believers are picking up on this. And um, I don't think it's looking good. It's going to get worse, you guys. So be prepared. Okay, friends? Be prepared spiritually. Don't be fearful. Don't be anxious. Just stay close to the Lord Jesus. Our brothers and sisters around the world who hold their faith, who are steadfast, grounded in the faith, who don't deny the Lord Jesus, and they, and they are they're good. That's the best way to stay grounded is our faith in the Lord Jesus. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Let's endure steadfast, grounded in the faith, you guys. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations and the end will come. It will come, you guys. The end of the age is coming. And we look forward to that day. It's nothing to be fearful for, okay? Great tribulation. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, remember it's going to be something we're going to see. When you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, Whoever reads, let him understand. So this is regards to the Temple Mount region, the holy place. That was the only holy place on earth because the presence of our Lord, our God, was there. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountain. So they're going to be directly affected, those who are in Judea at this time. Let him who is on the house stop not go down to take anything out of his house and let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes but woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babes in those days and pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the sabbath because everything in israel is closed on the sabbath gates are closed stores are closed the roads are quiet for then there will be great tribulation such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh will be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Remember, friends, the word of God is always very consistent, repetitive. It's telling us to be prepared for tribulation, to be equipped in the faith, grounded, steadfast, 
and to rejoice when we are experiencing trials and tribulations and testings because that very testing of our faith is what is going to produce the gold, the silver, the things that are going to last for eternity. Again, to remind you all, everything we, we see in this world today, friends, is all temporary. <laughs> we are looking forward to the kingdom of Christ when he returns and set up his kingdom in Jerusalem. So there's much good to look forward to, but we've got to persevere, we've got to push through and not give up. Then if anyone says to you, look, here's the Christ, or there, do not believe it, for false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. See, I have told you beforehand. We are not going to be in the dark. We're not going to be left in the dark. We have no excuses that we didn't know because the Lord himself has told us so we will know beforehand remember what he said to his disciples that they're no longer just servants but his friends you know when we enter into fellowship with him by the power of the Holy Spirit we're able to understand these things because he reveals these truths to his children to his friends therefore if they say to you look he's in the desert I think Arabia when I hear when I see that do not go out or oh, look he's in the inner rooms what inner rooms are we talking about it, could that be a reference to the Temple Mount do not believe it I think what the Lord is saying here look if anyone says he is here even if it's in the desert or even if it's in some inner room don't believe it don't just disregard it, completely disregard it, because his coming will be as such. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Coming of the Son of Man, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Why? Because this light of the Son of Man, his sign is going to appear. His light is going to shine so bright, it's going to be very obvious, you guys. It's going to be a world event, a worldwide event. Everyone's going to be witness to this. Is it any wonder that the King of Glory, when he returns in all his magnificent glory with the host of heaven, all the other lights are going to go out as a respect for the coming King. Let no other light be out there to shine its glory, even though they are the lesser glories, the moon and the sun and the stars. That's, I believe that's why he does that in, in his wisdom. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. Then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So is it possible that this coming of the Son of Man will be across a day and a night because the sun will be dark and the moon will not give its light the stars will fall from heaven it's possible they will see the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet feast of trumpets you guys and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other no one's going to be left alone on that day. All those who are looking to the Messiah, even those Jews who are blinded in part, remember what it says in Romans 11, the whole house of Israel is going to be saved, you guys. Although it's going to be a remnant, but it's not going to take the Lord by surprise. He knows what he's doing. Now learn the parable of the fig tree. When its branches already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see these things, know that it is near at the doors. And I know there are many studies out there that talk about, well, what does the fig tree represent? Well, the Lord is giving us the interpretation. He's saying as allegory, when the branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. It's, it's common sense, right? It's a no-brainer. So you also, when you see these things putting forth their leaves, all the signs, know that it is near at the doors. 
Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. It's a very long chapter. Shall I continue? But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. And friends, I know there are people also who interpret this to mean the giants are going to come back, but the Lord Jesus doesn't talk to us about giants. Okay? Again, let's not read into the text now. It's possible. I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm, I'm, I'm just not saying that that's what the Lord is talking about. Let's not complicate things, guys. Let's not major or minors. What does he say? Let's, let's just stick with the word of God. And let's just stick with the interpretation that our Lord gives us. Himself. Look. Let me show you. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. And he's going to tell you what that day will be. For as in the days before the flood... They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. That's what he means by as it was in the days of Noah. They disregarded the warning signs. They disregarded the warning of coming judgment that Noah faithfully was preaching. They carried on as normal. They didn't care, you guys. That's what the Lord is telling us. It's gonna, And when it comes, everyone's going to be taken by surprise. It's going to be instant. <clears throat> then, two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. <clears throat> taken in judgment. The ones who are left are reserved, preserved, the remnant. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Watch, therefore... For you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. But we will know the season. We will know the signs. We don't know if it's going to be 1 p.m. in the afternoon or 10 p.m. in the evening. That's what he's talking about. You don't know what hour. When he says hour, it means that we don't know the hour. So be prepared. Now, let me bring your attention, friends. I wanted to lay that as a foundation. Our Lord has warned us of times of great difficulty. Tribulation is coming. And it's already been here for a long time, you guys. I've got verses here regards to persecution. What I'll do, I'll read them at the end of this video. Again, friends, this is to bring your attention to the persecution of our brothers and sisters around the world. Wonderful, very important, very sobering report by our brother Raymond Ibrahim. This was um, uh, uploaded on the 24th of August. This is for July, not for the year, but for the last month. An injustice crying out to heaven, Muslim persecution of Christians, July 2020. A Muslim man broke into the historic Holy Cross Church in Turkey and started crying, Allahu Akbar, blasphemy. Remember the beast and the harlot? They have this thing in common. They are full of names of blasphemy. Just, just think blasphemy. And yet they are the ones who want to enforce blasphemy laws because they don't want you to offend what they believe. No, this is the Antichrist threat, and it's coming. It's already here. The signs are all around us, you guys, and it won't be long until it comes a little closer to home. I'm talking about us in the West. The slaughter of Christians, Uganda. It's going to go through many different regions here, because sadly that's how widespread the persecution is, okay? Uganda, a group of Muslims beat and drowned a pastor and another Christian for sharing the gospel with their co-religionists. Co I might skip some of the names if I find them difficult to pronounce. Peter, pastor of the Church of Christ and church member of Tuele Mumbai, had begun to sail across Lake Nakua, where they would meet and evangelize to Muslims. More hardline Muslims disliked this. We have discovered that your mission is not to fish, but to hold Christian meetings and then convert Muslims to Christianity, a man told them. We are not going to take this mission of yours lightly. This is our last warning to you. On the next day in late June, Christian villagers came, knocking on the door of David, a local leader. 
They were requesting help, saying Muslims from Lagoon Loya had invaded the area around the lakeside and several Christians were reported to have been injured, including my son. Immediately we rushed to the scene of the incident with several Christians. We hired four boats and drove to the lake and found out that two of the Christians had been badly beaten and drowned in the lake and died instantly. I pray the Lord would give me strength to continue to read because I don't want to be crying on video again. Pastor Peter, 25, is survived by a wife and two children, two and four. Congregant Tuel, 22, is survived by a wife and two-year-old child. Mozambique. Islamic militants have been responsible for escalating extremist violence in Cabo Del Delgado province, where they have been attempting to carve out an Islamic state on August 14th. ISIS captured the port. Where multiple churches have been burnt, people beheaded. What does the Antichrist do? But some reason we gloss over this detail. We gloss over it because I don't know what it is, you guys. Is it because the West... I'm talking about the Western Hemisphere. You know what I mean when I say the West. We're so desensitized. We're so far removed. Do you understand the gravity of what's taking place here? Incredible torture. Slaughtering of our brothers and sisters, you guys. Beheadings. In the name of their God. Because they offer up these sacrifices to Baal. It's Baal worship. Please look back on my videos. I did a whole video regarding Baal worship and its connection to Islam today and Saudi Arabia Mecca. Young girls kidnapped and hundreds of thousands of people displaced by the violence. More than 1,000 have been slaughtered since 2017 when the Islamic uprising began. In one week in June, 15 people were beheaded in the Christian majority nation. Can you imagine that coming to America, to Great Britain? to Germany, to France, to Italy. Now stop, put yourself in their shoes and think about that for a moment. <clears throat> Excuse me. Discussing the situation, Bishop Lisboa said the world has no idea yet what is happening because of indifference, right? Lord, forgive us for our indifference. Whatever happened to the church is known for love and compassion. Where is the outrage, you guys? Yeah, we want to protest about our rights being infringed upon, about copyright claims. Seriously? Seriously. Some of these ministers who have the platform that they do with hundreds and thousands of people watching them and following them, I don't, I don't hear a peep out of them regarding the Islamic threat that is coming. But those of us who are warning you regarding the, yes, the Islamic Antichrist threat that is coming, we're told to be silent. We're told that we are Islamophobic, that we are reading Islam into the biblical text. I'm telling you, that is just a complete distraction. It's a very narcissistic, in fact. You're, what people like that are trying to do are gaslighting me, trying to tell me, no, it's not as you think it is. No, it's not. It's over here. Don't you know it's the Jews? Don't you know it's the Catholics? Well, where are the Catholics and the Jews beheading people today? Bible prophecy in the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel, is about the end times. The latter days, the time of the end before our Lord returns. And what do we have taking place in our world today? I think even a child can approach the Lord Jesus, read the, the gospel accounts, read the Holy Bible, and still come to the same conclusion. And I think we need to do that. We need to come to the Word of God like children, not with our motives, not with some insidious agenda to read our perspective into the text and then say, no, this is what it's really saying, like the cunning serpent. Wake up, church, our... our Brothers and sisters, our body, remember, we're, we're part of the same body, are going through a genocide, a cleansing, an ethnic cleansing, a slaughtering. The same thing's going to happen to Israel. Do you realize that? 
the Great Tribulation, Jacob's trouble, you know, the one that is just meant for the Jews. And we're all going to be taken out of here because we're so good, you know. We're so special. We're going to escape it all, aren't we? Repent. Repent. We do not yet have the solidarity that there should be. Father, forgive us. Please forgive us, Lord. One of the worst incidents occurred on Good Friday when the terrorists torched a church and massacred 52 people. After explaining how five or six chapels were torched in just one recent month, the bishop described what happened to the historic sacred heart of Jesus' mission. Oh, now we'll have people bashing the Catholics now. Well, they're not really Christian, you know, they're Catholics and, you know. What, you're telling me they deserved it? Because they worship Jesus, because they believe in the Holy Trinity, the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Oh, but because they have their own traditions, you're going to knock them for that. You're telling me they deserved this. If I hear, I promise to God, if I hear anybody bashing Catholics or bashing any other type of Christian that doesn't fit in your little box, I will block you. I will not tolerate that kind of slander against the body of Christ. The accuser of the brethren. Perhaps that is your father. Because that's not the father's heart. I think we're all going to be a little surprised when we enter that place, if we get in, if we get into heaven, to look around and find out who made it and who didn't. So let's humble ourselves and repent. What is happening is an injustice that is crying out to heaven. Paolo Rangel, a Portuguese member of the European Parliament, also discussed the situation in Mozambique. The international community is nowhere to be seen in regard to the problem. You know, when it comes a little closer to home, I think we're all going to realize how bad it was and how some of us, who were trying our best to warn you, were right. Just like in the days of Noah, how many people were warning of the coming judgment? One man, you guys, one man, Noah. And what happened after that? The whole world drowned. The people were already living in extreme poverty, facing grave difficulties. The problem is that at the present moment, these people are facing the threat of death or losing their homes, of becoming uprooted. At present, we know that there are young girls who have been abducted and enslaved forced into sexual slavery by some of these guerrillas, these insurgents, these terrorists. We know that the recruitment of boys and adolescents, some of them very young, aged 14, 15, 16, is also happening. It is obvious that these young boys are under coercion. If they refuse to join the group, they could be killed. Let me remind you of what's taking place in Britain right now, that the government the very people who are meant to be protecting society and the most vulnerable, the most innocent in our society, children, young ones, right? They're trying to cover up the fact that it's Muslim grooming gangs that are the problem. Pedophilia? Oh no, but we can't talk about that. Oh, of course not, no. Because our countries are very invested in Saudi Arabia. The harlot. Nigeria. <sighs> Absolutely heartbreaking what's going on in Nigeria also, you guys. In a 35-second video posted July 22nd, Islamic terrorists executed five men, three of whom are Christians, blindfolded and on their knees with the executors standing behind them. One of the terrorists said, Pay close attention. This is a message to all those being used by infidels to convert Muslims to Christianity. Pause. And what did Pope Francis say when he went to Morocco? He told the Christians there to not evangelize Muslims. Appeaser. He's an appeaser. 
We want you out there to understand that those of you being used to convert Muslims to Christianity are only being used for selfish purposes. And that is the reason whenever we capture you, they don't care to rescue you or work towards securing your release from us. And this is because they don't need you or value your lives. We therefore call on you to return to Allah by becoming Muslims. We shall continue to block all routes you travel. If you don't heed our warning, the fate of these five individuals will be your fate. Then the speaker says Bismillah, meaning in the name of Allah. And the executioners shoot their captives in the backs of their heads, offering sacrifices to Baal. Their God demands blood where our Lord Jesus gave his blood for us. <clears throat> oh no, but the Antichrist is meant to be some fake Messiah wannabe bringing peace and getting everyone to worship him and, you know, he's going to be this new age looking kind of Jewish Messiah. No. He's a dragon. He's, when he comes, he's coming after the woman and her offspring, Israel and the Christians. With great wrath. Read it for yourself. It's in the book of Revelation, chapter 12. On July 10, let me read from the top. Additionally, at least 171 Christians were slaughtered by Muslim Fulani herdsmen in the space of roughly three weeks. Summaries of some follow. I told you, friends, it's very upsetting. But you know what? I'm, I hope it does upset you. I hope you actually feel compassion and you are moved to pray, intercede. I pray that this breaks your heart and that it moves you to pray with tears, with anguish, with great sorrow, with grief, as though these were your children, as though this was your wife, as though this was your husband. We are one body, are we not? We feel the pain of one another. Mostly women and children massacred and torched many homes. They killed two of my children and husband, recalled Bilkis or James from a hospital bed. They also hacked another five of Bilkis's relatives to death with machetes, including a mother and her baby daughter, and a mother and her two sons. Oh, well, you know, maybe it's poverty that drives these people. What do you think? Maybe it's a lack of education. What do you think? It can't be Islam. Islam means peace, doesn't it? These guys are so misinformed, aren't they? On July the 11th, a neighbouring village was raided. Ten women, a baby and an elderly man were burnt to death in a house where they had taken refuge. Another seven villagers were injured and four houses burnt out. On July 19th, people attending a wedding celebration were among at least 32 Christians massacred in Fulani attacks. On July 23rd, a horrific night attack was launched during a torrential rainstorm. At least seven Christians died as militants brutally hacked unarmed men and women and children to death with machetes. They make no distinction, heartless, wicked. Do you understand? These are de demonized people because they're offering up sacrifices to Baal. The report adds that this was the second attack on the village within days with seven murdered in attack days earlier. On July 29th, Muslim herdsmen murdered another 14 Christians, 13 of whom belonged to one extended family. Only one member of the family remained alive. His wife, all his children, our aunt, uncle, brother and other relatives were slaughtered. Can I remind you where this, this is all taken place? Recent. This is just for one month, you guys. Not for the whole year. This was in Nigeria. Nigeria. All this has been going on recently. Can you imagine what else has been happening for the past year? Attacks on Christian churches, Turkey. A Muslim man broke into Holy Cross, a historic Armenian cathedral in eastern Turkey, and proceeded to recite the Azan, the Islamic call to prayer traditionally made from mosques. This is what subjugation looks like. This is what being conquered looks like. This is what being dominated and made to feel like you are overcome. This is the Antichrist spirit, and this is exactly what they're doing. 
The Islamic call to prayer traditionally made from mosques while others videotaped him. He repeatedly chanted Allahu Akbar and proclaimed the creed for Shahada in his name. He also wrote a graffiti on the church walls. Raising the azan in the church sanctuary has brought back life to it. Blasphemy, blasphemy, blasphemy. Most churches and monasteries in Turkey have been left abandoned following the genocides of Christian peoples in the early 20th century and the mass immigration of Christians from the country due to decades of persecution as a result. Many churches in Turkey were left to ruin or turned into mosques or stables for animals. In a separate incident, right before the start of Sunday worship service on July 12th, a Turkish man appeared at the Antalya Bible Church and asked to speak to church leadership. He was told to return on the next day and did so, only to issue death and arson threats to a pastor. You and Osgood, another church leader, are dead. I broke the window of his church a few months ago, will attack again, and if necessary, burn it. Security intervened and he was asked to leave before police were involved. Later it was revealed that police had apprehended him when he first broke the church's windows but released him because he had expressed regret. And yet these Islamic leaders of these nations, Pakistan, Turkey, Malaysia, is the untold number of Islamic nations, Iran, they want to tell us about blasphemy laws, about Islamophobia. This is why they do it, you guys. They want nobody to critique them, no one to criticize them. We just have to appease this great dragon. Hopefully, it might spare our life. Pakistan. A church was forced to take down its cross. Barnabas, a Christian resident of the village, explains why. Why, why do they do this stupidity? What's, what's the point? What are they trying to... What's the message they, they're telling to the Christians there to remove the cross why the cross is an offense to Islam Islam is the Antichrist system it was set out to directly oppose the Christian faith you guys directly to attack the deity of Christ the Holy Scriptures and the covenants regarding Israel there's no other outfit out there today that matches the biblical text regards to the Antichrist and Mystery Babylon. None. None of these theories line up with the Word of God. But here we are. We're seeing this movement is spreading. Nobody's preventing it from happening. It's just getting worse. And people want to tell me it's the Jews that we need to worry about. It's the Catholics we need to worry about. We constructed three floors of minarets on a church and fixed the cross on top of that. However, it was removed after we received threats from local Muslims. The Muslims demanded we remove the cross and all three floors of the minarets, therefore we had to obey them. Now the building does not look like a church, it's just a room and therefore we are sad. With broken hearts, a local pastor added, the congregation agreed to take the cross down even though it was an illegal demand against Pakistan's constitution which guarantees religious freedom to all citizens, which is a load of nonsense because they also have the blasphemy laws which keeps the population, the communities in this perpetual tit-for-tat. Allegations made against Christian believers, you guys, in Pakistan are, and they're just it's day in, day out over there because they have the Islamic laws to back them up and if the court doesn't um, proceed, the people and the communities take matters into their own hands. We took this decision for the safety and protection of Christians in the village. Muslims threatened that if we don't remove the cross, they will ban the prayer services and take the church property. The authorities must look into this matter and ensure freedom of religion to all the segments of society. It's never going to happen. We're never going to have this coexistence with Islam. Now, Israel entering in this peace security alliance deal with UAE is not going to bring peace in the region. No, it's going to make them prosperous. 
while this kind of stuff continues. Who's going to hold Saudi Arabia accountable? That's where Islam come from, right? That is the guardian of the Islamic shrine. Who's going to petition Saudi Arabia? Let me tell you, nobody. Nobody's going to do it. In a separate incident, police violently interrupted a Christian prayer service according to, do you know, friends, I could go on and can go on. Look where I am. I'm only at the top of this article. Let me scroll. I'll put the link in the description. Canada. Let's read what happened in Canada. On July 18th, a 16-year-old Muslim refugee from Syria pleaded guilty to four counts of terrorism. His schemes, including a solo operation in the next few days, were shared with an exposed, were shared and exposed by an undercover FBI agent posing as a fellow ISIS supporter online. Churches the Muslim youth had written and other crowded places filled with crucifix believers were among his primary targets. So is it any surprise if they do that kind of thing in Pakistan, in Nigeria, in Somalia, all the other nations of the world? Are they, why do we feel exempt? You know why? Because they're not, they're not yet the majority. Detonators, containers filled with white powders that turned out to be explosives, and diagrams of improvised explosive devices were among the 95 exhibits, exhibits they seized. It was a bomb lab, says the report. His sentencing is set for September. Thank God that he was um, found out. France, a fire broke out in the Cathedral of Nantes, caused by an asylum seeker. And people want to bash Trump for having this Muslim immigration law thing. Was it any wonder why? How do we know who we're letting in? How do we know? Because we, we, we're a very tolerant society, right? They use our laws, manipulate us, and work against us. I don't see Jews do that, though, do you? I don't see Catholics behave in this manner, do you? Muslim social media users, mostly of Arab origin, and their leftist fanboys in Central Europe expressed their enthusiasm and glee online according to a July 19 German language report. Such expressions appeared all throughout social media, especially Facebook, yet they want to block people for preaching the gospel, they want to criticize and shun freedom of expression when we're trying to expose bad things in the world, but these social media giants are very quick to shut down that kind of expression but they let these folks get away with it why is that because islamic folks are behind the funding of these massive social media giants including youtube the sympathizers of islamization bluntly celebrated their satisfaction through laughing or smiling um, emojis or like clicks they expressed what they think of burning christian houses of worship yet yeah, that's what they really think about you and i when it comes down to the heart of it. They don't respect Jesus Christ. Is this how you behave? Is this the fruit? What did our Lord tell us? You will know a tree by its fruit. They can speak all the stuff they want to tell us about how they revere Jesus Christ. They demean him. Let me set the record straight. Islamic teachings regarding our Lord God, Jesus Christ, is demeaned in the Islamic faith. They lower his status. They disregard his life, death, and resurrection. They, they consider him as, as a mere prophet, and Muhammad is superior to him. Muhammad is the Antichrist. The report further observed that this type of expression of opinion does not lead to the deletion and blocking of the users by social media teams, where masses of other types of comments are deleted as hate speech. Attacks on converts to Christianity, like me, for example. Remember, I'm, a, I'm an ex-Muslim. Oh, you guys, I'll get, I don't know, I could read the whole thing. Kenya, a pack of seven Muslims beat Fozio, a Christian woman, age 21, <clears throat> till she lost consciousness. They also broke the teeth of her sister, Aisha, age 19. <coughs> I'm sorry. 
and beat their 18-year-old brother. Problems began when Muslims started questioning us why we were not attending Friday worship at the mosque, Fozio explained. This interrogation continued for several months. Several months they went through this. Talk about perseverance, endurance, patience. Then one day, when the siblings went outside their home to restore its water supply, they saw a raucous group of Somalis approaching. There were noisy shouts calling us infidels. In Arabic, it's kuffar or kafir. They said, we know you do not belong to us. We have got hold of you today. We have no mercy on you people. You need to return to where you came from. They began hitting me with sticks and a blunt object which injured my back and my right hand. There I fainted for five hours and regained consciousness at the hospital where she remained for two days. For his name's sake, you guys. For bearing the name of Christ Jesus. Do you know what that feels like? And this is the kind of persecution that the dragon, when he's thrown out, remember what it says in Revelation chapter 12. Let me go there. I had it opened because I knew I would have to refer you to it. Revelation chapter 12, the whole um, chapter is regarding the dragon, the woman, the seed and what happens the woman persecuted now when the dragon saw that he'd been cast to the earth he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child but the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the presence of the serpent you see that word or two words are used here interchangeably so the word of God is making it very clear this is the same serpent that is mentioned in the book of Genesis his enmity is against the woman over there and now the woman here Israel it's the same nature the serpent in that he's deceptive cunning seducing and the dragon to show that he is full of wrath anger and has a power within him that is of a devouring power but the lord god allows it it's going to refine his people that's why persecution is a cleansing a work of refining and preparing the bride to make her spotless holy pure that's how we are prepared friends this is why i'm saying be prepared that's how it's going to be so the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. He hates her. He, he doesn't hide it. He's not pretending to be a messiah. He's not trying to rue her into anything to deceive her. But the earth helped the woman and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which a dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. The Jewish Messiah. Islam is that vehicle, that very entity designed to fulfill this scripture. There is no other system in this world, I guarantee you, none that fulfills this. Not even one, not even comes close to it. How does he make war? I'm sure he needs an army. And in this religion, you've got millions of people willing to kill and be killed for the cause of Allah, jihad. Why the nations have we got covered here? <clears throat> Morocco. Converts to Christianity Morocco have been repeatedly arrested by police as part of a campaign clamping down on their faith, says the July 17 report. Some have been arrested as many as three times in one week. Jawad al Mehdi, president of the Moroccan Association of Rights and Religious Liberties, elaborated. Most are released after interrogation, but are often put under pressure to return to Islam and face abuse when they refuse. 
You see, I experienced this on a very tiny, minor scale. Not even 1%. So I know what that feels like. But the majority of people who are living in these Islamic nations are experiencing it full force and it's relentless. Let me remind you, it's relentless. It doesn't stop. It goes on, it goes on, it goes on. There's no end in sight to this until our Lord returns. In fact, it's going to spread and get worse. As one example, he gave the story of Muhammad al-Mughani who converted to Christianity and whose employee had waved a gun at him and threatened to kill him. When Mr. al Magani filed a complaint with police, he was told not to speak about his conversion and threats were made against his family six months later following an argument with his employer. He was arrested and sentenced to six months in prison. His wife was interrogated as well. If a Moroccan enters a church, one of, the two things, one of two things can happen. Either a policeman sitting in front of the church arrests him or her, or the cleric in charge of the church asks the person to leave unless the purpose is tourism. Moroccan Christians worship in secret house churches to avoid state sanctions or harassment from society. The very place where the Pope visited, telling Christians don't evangelize. What did Jesus Christ say? This gospel shall be preached in all the nations until the end comes. But the Islamic people don't want to hear it because they are antichrist. They don't like the freedom of religion and freedom of expression as long as it's theirs. I hope I've really drilled that point into you. The report elaborates, it is even more dangerous for Christian converts when allegations of blasphemy are made. Yep, Christians have been held for several days and there have been incidents of violence. Uh, <clears throat> unlike foreign Christians, converts do not enjoy freedom of worship under the law. Foreign clergy are said to discourage Moroccan Christians from attending their churches because of fear of being criminally charged with proselytism. Under Moroccan law, proselytizing or converting to another religion is a criminal offence punishable by between six months and three years in prison. Maybe that's the reasoning behind Pope Francis' warning to the Christians there not to evangelize them. Maybe he wants to preserve their lives. At what cost? Appeasement, you guys? We love not our lives to the death. We take up our cross and follow Jesus Christ. You see, now on the other hand, in Arabia, you've got the UAE, all the Emirates, right? Emirates, pretending that they have this tolerance. What's the Abrahamic house all about if it isn't about this so-called tolerance, interfaith dialogue nonsense? By building a synagogue, a church and a mosque together in the same location as a sign of what? Coming into agreement with the three Abrahamic faiths while all this continues. Harlotry, mystery Babylon. They need to show this display of tolerance in the region because of prosperity. That's all it's about, you guys. <sighs> And they're also worried about the threat that's coming from Iran and from Turkey, who are also building alliances with other nations, nuclear armed. I, I would expect to see Pakistan, Afghanistan, China, Korea, all join this northern army, this northern king that's coming, all these nuclear powerhouse nations to come against Israel. And what is Israel doing? entering into alliances with the Arabs, thinking that that will guarantee her peace, that they will protect her. Her deliverer is the Lord. Her protection is in Messiah, and there will come a time when they will realize that, you guys, and they will call upon his name, Jesus, Yeshua, and then he will come and destroy his enemies. Pakistan, okay, I could go on, you guys. I think you get the point. This is heartbreaking. Yemen, Germany, Lebanon again, slash Turkey, Egypt. 
Let's read this one. A Christian wife and mother who disappeared for nearly three months, supposedly because she had willingly converted to Islam and no longer wanted any connection to her infidel husband and three young daughters, was finally returned to her family. This happens so often. They steal the women from the Coptic church. The women, the daughters, forcibly <clears throat> marry them, rape them, pretend that they converted to Islam, while the family, the Christian families, are looking searching for their lost daughters some of them are returned very rare that they are returned they return them humiliated this is how they humiliate the women they have no respect for women i don't care what these feminist muslim women in the west want to tell me there is no respect for women in islam rania abdul al masi al masi christ that's a very common name in um Muslim, Asian, African nations as a, your last name, your surname. You name yourself after Christ. A high school teacher of English had disappeared on April 22nd. A few days after her family contacted state security, she appeared in a one-minute video dressed in a black niqab, the Islamic attire, female attire. In the video and in between tears, Rania insisted that she had finally and formally converted to Islam, which, praise be to Allah, she had been secretly following and concealing from her family for nine years. Accordingly, she no longer wanted anyone, her husband, children, family, to bother about her anymore. Imagine what she went through. Can you think about that for a moment, you guys? If this happened to any one of our daughters? Why? Because Islam hates us. Simple. They hate us, they want to kill us, they want to get rid of us. I can't put it in any other word. <clears throat> any p political correct terminology. Not all of them, remember, I'm not talking about your nice, good, friendly, kind, hospitable Muslim neighbour next door. We're not talking about them because they, frankly, have better morals than Islam could ever teach them. <clears throat> so I'm glad you have nice Muslim neighbours. From the start, her family refused to believe the video and gave compelling reasons why. We have no problem for her to go to Islam of her free will based on conviction, but not as a person who is threatened and coerced into doing so, her brother Rimon explained. Look how gracious that is as well. She was definitely kidnapped and forced to make that video due to threats against her for her husband and children if she refused to comply. For nearly three months, Rania's family and the Coptic Church pleaded with local authorities, even sending a special petition to President Sisi until she was finally returned July 15th. <clears throat> a Christian spokesman said that Rania and her reunited family are currently staying in an undisclosed location until calm returns to the region. Islam, thank you so much for your religion of pieces, destroying lives, destroying um, geography destroying the spirit of man crushing the soul of humans and just declaring that your God is great satanic evil the Lord rebuke you Satan D due to the delicate nature of the situation the spokesman gave no other details concerning her disappearance and reemergence other than to say that Rania remains a Christian who never once converted to Islam Tunisia this is just for July, remember friends? That was it. Okay, let me just tell you who Raymond Ibrahim is. If you've never heard about him, you need to look him up, buy his books, check out his website, watch his interviews on TV. He's thoroughly educated, thoroughly well-researched, and um, you need to know who he is if you want to understand the threat. Author of the recent book, Sword and Scimitar, 14 Centuries of War Between Islam and the West, is a distinguished senior fellow at the Gateston Institute, a Shulman fellow at the David Horowitz Freedom Center, and a Judith Rosen Friedman fellow at the Middle East Forum. And it tells you why he does this. The person persecution of Christians in the Islamic world has become endemic. Accordingly, Muslim persecution of Christians was developed in 2011 to collate some, by no means all, of the incidences of persecution that occur or are reported each month. It serves two purposes, to document that which the mainstream media does not, the habitual, if not chronic, persecution of Christians, to show that such persecution is not random, it's not random, you guys, but it's systemic and interrelated, that it is rooted in a worldview inspired by Islamic Sharia. 
and if we don't do anything about it, Sharia law is coming to a town near you. I was looking up regarding World War Three. I had this phrase in my head this morning that the world peop nations of the world are preparing for World War Three. While I was making myself a cup of coffee, I had that phrase in my mind. I don't know if it was the Holy Spirit. So I searched it, and I searched Middle East nations preparing, and yeah, they are. The nations of the earth are preparing for massive conflict, you guys. I was looking at foreign relations with North Korea to find out what's the situation there. It's a, it's a very dangerous situation <clears throat> because they've been in the news again. And I'm looking at the map. Oh. Daniel 7. Let me bring this scripture. I don't want to forget about this. Daniel chapter 7 verse 15 and after I read the end of this I'll end the video I Daniel was grieved in my spirit within my body and the visions of my head troubled me I came near to one of those who stood by and asked him the truth of all of this so he told me and made known to me the interpretation of these things those great beasts which are four are four kings which arise out of the earth but the saints of the most high shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever even forever we have that to look forward to the saints of the most high shall receive the kingdom what kingdom what are they fighting over jerusalem <coughs> Does that make sense? Do you see that? They're fighting over the kingdom, over Jerusalem. They're at the heart of it all, you guys, is Israel, Jerusalem. But it's okay, because the angel says, but the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Then I wish to know the truth about the fourth beast, which is different than from all the others. <coughs> I'm sorry. Exceedingly dreadful, that wasn't Rome. With its teeth of iron and its nails of bronze, which devoured, broke in pieces and trampled the residue with its feet. The ten horns that were on its head, and the other horn which came up, the eleventh one, before which three fell. The little horn is going to um, remove three other rulers after the ten nation confederation is formed, so we need to look out for that. That horn which had eyes and a mouth which spoke pompous words, whose appearance is greater than his fellows. I was watching, and the same horn was making war against the saints and prevailing against them. It would seem that he overcomes us and prevails against us. But you know, in the book of Revelation, it says that we overcome Satan. We overcome the beast. We overcome the dragon by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the lamb. That's telling us by being martyrs, you guys. So although the dragon, the little horn, thinks he can prevail, we have prevailed. You see how God's ways are not like, like our ways? <sighs> Until the ancient of days came and a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High. And the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. Friends, where is the kingdom going to be? on earth it's going to be in jerusalem isn't it that's what the end the um little horn is going to be warring over this is what they want because they want to <laughs> just um come against christ jesus they make war against the lamb remember what it says in the book of revelation thus he said the fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth which shall be different from all other kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth, trample it and break it into pieces. The ten horns are ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom and another shall arise. So once the ten are together, the other one, the eleventh one, 
will arise after them, but he is the one who will be different from the first ones and shall subdue three kings. That's another very clear sign that we are to look out for. Very clear, isn't it, in the word of God? He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High. So he doesn't pretend to be a Messiah. <clears throat> He's going to be a persecutor, a Hitler. <coughs> I'm really concerned about how Erdogan is behaving lately. He seems to be behaving very similar in the spirit of Hitler. Remember what Hitler was like before he became really worrying? People kind of ignored it at the time. They thought he was a little crazy. He shall persecute, persecute the saints of the Most High and shall intend to change times and law. Then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time and times and half a time. His times and his laws are going to be in contradiction to the times and laws of God. Remember that. Always bear that in mind. And I believe the Sharia Islamic law fits because it's in direct opposition to the Bible. For example, Friday is their holy day. It's not sh Shabbat. In Israel, it's Shabbat, right? Sabbath. But he would do this in the region, which is already there, you guys. Friday is the holy day in the Islamic nations. It fits. It's not Sunday. People think it's Sunday. Oh, my goodness, you guys. Oh. Back in the day of the Lord or on our Lord's day be that it doesn't fit but the court shall be seated and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy forever <coughs> then the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people the saints of the Most High the very ones who be marginalized, persecuted, eradicated, slaughtered, subjugated, overcome. God is going to lift them up because blessed are the meek, friends. It's the meek who are going to inherit the earth. What does it say? It says that in Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Those who are not fighting for their rights, those who are not protesting that, that their rights be acknowledged no the meek blessed are the meek because of this look what he's going to do he's going to elevate the meek you guys the ones who are despised rejected and all dominion shall serve and obey him hallelujah this is the end of the account as for me daniel my thoughts greatly troubled me and my countenance changed but i kept the matter in my heart. Amen. I learned the video there, you guys. This is the website. Please go there, leave a comment. Follow him on Facebook also. Give him feedback. Give him encouragement. Encourage him in the faith. It's very difficult what he does. He's constantly butting heads with um, the care organization here in America. They're always trying to discredit him, complain about him, but he, he continues, he, he perseveres in Jesus Christ's mighty name.